Artillery shell kits that are sold for consumer use must be sold with an appropriate launching device, which means you don't have to worry about buying the tubes separately uh, if this is your first time buying shells. Uh, so you know that if you're going to buy the shells, you're going to end up with a tube that will work with them. Here you can see we have six ball shells and a launching tube. Okay, now let's uh, unravel the fuse on one of these. It's going to be tied up around it. Now as you can see, uh, there's a ball on top and a cylinder on the bottom. The cylinder is the bottom. Here's the arrow pointing up. So you always want to make sure this is the lift charge that kicks it out of the tube. And this is the shell itself. Now on ball shells, there's a string in the top that holds the fuse upwards. You don't want to pull the fuse through that string. You want to leave it in that string like that because that's what holds it straight up and down as you lower it down into the tube so it doesn't get kinked and get caught in there. More importantly, uh, you've got to keep it straight up in case you have to pull it back out. Uh, if it gets cocked in there uh, and you don't have the fuse through that string, uh, it's going to wedge on the way back out and you won't be able to get it out and fix it. Uh, if that happens, just tip the whole tube upside down and, and shake it or try and tap it out. Another thing with this string, if you notice they're all different colors, uh, this has different colors. The color generally indicates the color of the break of the shell. So you get somewhat of an idea of what kind of effect you're going to have. And black usually indicates crackle. And when that bursts in the sky, that's called the break. Okay, now here's a little higher quality uh, shell kit. Um, here we got a white string, we got a purple string, we got a green string. And these also have the effects labeled on the side. Uh, green string is red outer ring with green inner ring. Purple string, let's see what that is. Green outer ring with purple inner ring. Now a canister shell works the same way. Um, they'll usually have a top or an up arrow. Every shell I've ever seen has it. Now these uh, canister shells, the fuse comes out of the top right here, but you can feel with your thumb that it actually goes into the bottom. It works the same way. The lift is on the bottom, uh, the brake is on the top this canister shell right here the fuse doesn't go into the paper it literally is outside and you can see where it enters the shell and it has that string on top a white string white strobe okay we're gonna put a ball shell down in this tube here cylinder down ball up okay you can tell that's seated all the way in the bottom never ever look down into a tube okay when you go to load a shell uh, you're going to determine which way is up you're going to hang the shell by its fuse here's a cutaway tube you're going to make sure it slides all the way to the bottom i like to hear that thunk at the bottom that's how you know it's seated um now suppose your shell got kitty wampus and got cocked right there uh sure it stopped and it's not going any further but uh you're going to have a low break because the lift charge is not going to have enough energy to give the shell the velocity it needs to get it high enough before the break. Uh, that break is going to happen one or two seconds after the lift charge goes off no matter what. Okay, no matter which way the tube is facing or how low that shell is, it's a, they're all timed a certain way and once that time is up it's going off. Okay, now say you've just shot a shell, uh, you always want to let your tube cool Another good idea is, after each shot, if you're not using a rack, to tap it out. And here's why. Um, now if you see what came out of there, this is the charred end of another shell lift. And the paper's burnt, so obviously that was smoldering down inside there. Now if you could imagine that being like a, a glowing red cigarette ash, and you come along to load your next shell in there, well you see that fuse goes in the bottom right there. Now look where that would end up, right on that fuse. If you were to set that shell down in there and this was still in there smoldering, that would ignite almost immediately. Chances are your fingers will still be over the hole when that goes off and uh, you're going to have a bad day and you're going to learn a lesson real quick.
Also you want to try to tap out any debris that might be stuck in there that would prevent the shell from making it all the way down to the bottom. If you're using a single tube, does it support it with some weight? Brick it down. Um, not necessarily because it's going to tip over when the shell ejects. That's not such a big deal. But usually what happens is um, somebody's going to light this and as the fuse lights, the fuses literally spray fire and, and somebody says, ouch, I got burned. Okay, suppose they, they twitch a little bit or they jump back and the tube can tip over right at you um, and give your spectators a bad day. Hey, when you get ready to shoot, you always want to put your tubes on a piece of wood, um, not only to stabilize them, but also if you just shoot it in the grass, there's a chance you can loosen up the plug in the bottom of the tube because there's not good support on the bottom. Okay, now without getting directly over the tube, drop our ball shell in, cylinder down, ball up. The fuse is meant to be lit at the cut part, right on the end. That's where it's going to light the easiest, not up here on the side. Also remember how I was talking about fuses spraying fire. Uh, that's why I like to use um, some type of a butane torch or something that has some reach and also something that can resist the wind a little bit. So, while staying low and away from the tube, touch a flame to the very end of the fuse and get back. Pretty clean, self. I can tell it's all the way at the bottom. Stay low. Get a good lighter. Hit the end of the flame.